Welcome to Candid Conversation number 155. Today I'm going to be talking about the dumbing down of people. Uh, primarily Americans because that's where I live, but I'm sure it's happening other, where, other places too. <clears throat> First off, you have the dumbing down of people who go to church. When I went to, when I was a kid, um, we had, I didn't go to a right division church. I went to a Pentecostal holiness church. But the Bible was emphasized. Even though the preacher would get up and say, Oh, turn to your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. And he'd read the Beatitudes, let's say. I'm going to talk about the Beatitudes. And then for an hour he'd preach. He'd never mention the Beatitudes again. Uh, he'd never mention another scripture again. He would just go off into whatever they were preaching on. They would give some verse to say they were preaching on it. And then they'd launch into church doctrine for an hour. Uh, that's how it worked. Uh, but even then, there was an emphasis on scripture. The reason that I ended up getting in the right division was that uh, my church wanted us to read the Bible through in a year. And my uncle did that and you know found Romans and there you go. The rest is history. They encouraged us to read the Bible through in a year. We had Sunday school where you'd read the Sunday school lesson. It was based on scripture. You're encouraged to read your chapters in your Bible. My grandmother probably read the Bible cover to cover about 50 times. She probably did it about once a year for about 50 years. And then in addition to that, she would just read scripture on top of that. Uh, that was encouraged in the church. And not just the church that I grew up in, but other churches too. I'd go to, uh, later on in teenage years, early 20s, go to other churches and uh, it was the same thing. But now the Bible isn't encouraged anymore. You see overhead, you, you see people go to church now and have their Bibles. And they would, at first, they went into these overhead projectors and they put the, the scripture on the screen. Then they started going to different versions. When I was a kid, there were other versions. NIV was out there, and there were a couple of NASB, a couple other versions. But uh, people just didn't, most everybody stayed with the King James. Or if you didn't stay with the King James, you stayed with a version. You know, if you liked NIV, that's what you read, NIV. You picked one and you stuck with it. Or a lot of times it'd be whatever the church did. If the church went to NIV, then you're all reading NIVs. But then they started going, I, I noticed, the first I noticed it, and it may have happened before then, but the first I noticed it was when Rick Warren came out with that Purpose Driven Life, which was, oh, probably about 15 years ago, maybe even 20 now. Uh, early 2000s and he took pride in the fact that he was teaching from I think 40 different versions or something he even put it in the appendix why he was doing that and every chapter every page you'd turn to would be a different Bible version one I hadn't even heard back then I hadn't even heard of 40 different translations I knew there were several out there but I hadn't even heard it nowadays there are hundreds there's several new translations coming out every single year probably at least one or two a month new ones it's crazy how many are coming out now so um, he really made that popular that was the number one bestseller in Christianity for uh, over a year I think and and so that made it more popular and then all the churches started doing that and so now you're using all these different versions. Well, now it's confusion because now I may have a, you know, an NIV, but the the church is teaching from something else. So no need to bring my Bible, or or maybe they're doing like Rick Warren and they're just putting up different Bible versions on the screen. And I'm not I'm not gonna. If, in other words, if I bring a Bible, I'm not gonna be able to follow along because one, it's gonna be hard to turn to it fast enough. And two, I probably don't have that version. So then I don't 
bring my Bible. I don't read my Bible. And a big part of that, what's uh, sad about that is because now, if I'm not reading the Bible, I don't get the context. I used to always, and this may have just been me, I don't know, but when a preacher would go over a verse, I like to turn to it, and then I'd like to read a verse or two before or after it, just so I know the context of the verse. But now, if you don't bring your Bible, it's just something that's put on the screen. Well, you can't follow along. And you can't figure out the context. And all this is an effort to dumb down Christians. The Bible is the final authority. It is the truth of God, John 17, 17. In this world and how chaotic it is and ungodly and everything that's bad about this world, the one thing that stands is the Word of God to give sound doctrine, to help someone live, to, or for Christ to live in them, regardless of what's going on around them. And that authority has been taken away. People who even say they trust the Bible believe what it says. If, they, if you were to confront them with Scripture, they probably wouldn't know that's in there. Or if you tell them what they mean, well, no, I gotta look at what a scholar, you know, a commentary says. I gotta ask what my pastor says about that. I gotta. Well, if you're going to the scholar or you're going to the pastor, then they're your authority and not the Bible. And so you see, in churches nowadays, not only do people not bring their Bibles, they're not reading the Bibles during the week because they don't think they can understand them. They are not. Uh, the pastors aren't using the Bible if they use scripture it's just a verse or two that's plopped on an overhead um, taken out of context uh, you know I call those pillow verses they're a verse that you stitch on a pillow and then you think it's great but then you have no idea the context you know like Jeremiah 29 about uh, my plans for you is to prosper you to bring you to an expected end it's to do good to you um, never mind the context is Israel, it's not us today. Or like 1 Chronicles 7:14, if my people which are called by my name humble themselves and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Well, a couple of verses later it talks about if they don't do it, I'm going to take them out of their land and destroy them. Uh, again, given to Israel, not to the not a promise to the United States. Or they'll take a verse from the Psalms and you know, put it on a pillow or that's that's the type of verses that are put a whole sermon may be built around one verse and that verse is completely taken out of context but if you don't have your Bible and you're not following along then you don't know it so they can lead you into false doctrine without you even knowing it and you see that not just in the church but also in society as a whole there is this idea of tolerance that you know we got to be kind we got to be compassionate we can't judge everybody anybody um, that everybody's a winner we there are no losers you know with the kids uh, i remember andy griffith one episode where opie ran in a race and he lost and he was pretty upset about it and the whole point of the episode was andy teaching opie that uh, it's really easy to be a winner because everybody likes that but the hardest part is being a loser because uh, and being a good sport about it and learning that lesson because that's what happens in real life so nowadays though they don't do that they give all the kids an award but then you get out in the real world and you find out that when a company offers a job uh, guess what there are 500 applicants and only one person gets the job there are a lot more losers than winners and then they're all upset and they don't understand because in school everybody got a certificate everybody was awarded but here are 499 losers and one winner they don't know how to accept this because of this religion of tolerance and everybody's a winner and we're not judging you well all that is is to get you away from the truth is what it is because the funny thing is if I bring up God's Word oh well, you can't judge me who are you to say that you know that's relative well aren't you trying to give me an absolute truth that I should judge you aren't you being absolute aren't you being intolerant about that 
But yet, if I just give you a truth from God's Word, which for the most part of Christianity, or most part of the America's history, uh, no one would ever question the Bible, even if they didn't understand it. You know, the, the drunk out there who doesn't go to church, who doesn't follow that Jesus stuff or that religious stuff, uh, if you gave him a scripture, he doesn't know anything about it, he's still not going to argue with you. He'll believe it's true. Now, he may not follow it. You know, he may not do what you want him to do. He may not believe the gospel, but he's not going to argue against it. There was a there was a respect, a reverence for the Bible, recognizing it as God's Word. Whereas today, it's just, it's myth, it's fiction. I think that's funny because the Bible is banned from being in schools. And, you know, the teacher couldn't read a Bible passage before. You'd have, you'd watch The Rifleman or you watch All in the Family. And those aren't necessarily Christian shows on TV, but they would use scripture. I remember one story in The Rifleman, he went over a, a parable and a story in the book of Luke. I went over a whole um, whole chapter there. You know, his name was Lucas and his son's name was Mark, named after the Gospels. It was very common for people, all in the family, they used Christian jokes, jokes from the Bible, and everybody knew it. This wasn't a Christian show, it was actually toward the end, it was pretty liberal, uh, liberal ideas that they promoted, and yet, People knew the Bible, at least a little rudimentary, rudimentary um, understanding of it. And there was a respect for the Bible. But now, it's the society is all dumbed down. They're not, they don't know Scripture. And not only do they not know Scripture, but they're very antagonistic against it. If I was to ever read a, you know, if I was a teacher in a class and I read a Bible verse, just one Bible verse in the class, I'd probably lose my job, but if I read a verse from the Quran, or I'd, I'd be just fine. Or if I um, talked about Muhammad, oh, that's a history lesson. But if I talk about Jesus, oh, that's religion and I'm banned. And all this is is an effort to dumb down the society because the less truth you know, the less likely you're be saved. And you know, God's will, 1 Timothy 2, 4, is for all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. And 2 Corinthians 4, verse uh, 3 and 4 talks about how the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of those who are unbelievers, lest the light of the glorious gospel should come to them. It's hidden from them. Satan doesn't want people to know the truth, because the truth is that you're a sinner and that you need to trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins. And then if you get that, well, Satan can still stop God from filling heavenly places by not having the Christians understand sound doctrine. How are they going to rule in heavenly places? Sure, they're saved and they're going to heaven, but how are they going to take those higher positions in the government if they don't know basic sound doctrine from Paul's epistles? They're not going to be able to do it. And so Satan's attack is against truth because if he can get people not to hear the gospel, then they're not saved. If he, people who are saved it not hear mystery doctrine, then they don't come into the knowledge of the truth, and then this world keeps going on because God doesn't have anybody to replace Satan's forces in uh, heavenly places with. And so you have, um, and that just spills over into society. So you have children being taught, not being taught creation, but being taught evolution. But then they're taught tolerance and you can't judge people. And so they use that not because they want you to examine all the facts and examine the evidence before you see something. Because if you if that was the case, then they wouldn't just teach evolution. They'd teach creationism as well. And when you study it, I mean, if you're just trying to be objective to try to teach the truth, it's blatantly obvious that creationism has a lot more going for it as a theory than evolution does as a theory. And so then you would give uh, creationism you know, at least 95% of your time and evolution and any other theories maybe 5% when it comes to the creation of the world. Uh, but yet they don't do that. And then when it talks about the animal kingdom, uh, nowadays uh, kids are all taught about fake animals, dinosaurs, unicorns, things that don't exist. 
Uh, that's what they're taught about. So it's not about truth. Tolerance is about snuffing out the truth, getting rid of it. And it's not just in, in churches where you can't hear the gospel anymore or you can't hear sound doctrine anymore. It's also in society as a whole. When you look at what people know, Romans 1 says that God, the invisible things of Him, meaning of God, are clearly shown, being understood by the things that are made so that they are without excuse. A five or six year old child knows that there is a God and that He created the world. If you've just left Him alone and you've let Him go with what He knows inwardly, because Romans 1 says we know about God's eternal power and Godhead. We know those things. God has shown them to us. John 1 talks, and verse 9 talks about the light, that Jesus Christ is the light that lighteth every man which cometh into the world. God has given every single human who is born some basic knowledge about God. And that's why Jesus says you need to become as a child. If you don't become as a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven because the child knows some basic things about God and God wants to build on those things so that you end up recognizing you're a sinner, you trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins, you're given the gift of eternal life, Christ lives in you, and then the Holy Spirit can teach you the things of God. But of course, Satan doesn't want people to be saved, doesn't want people to come into the knowledge of the truth. He is the God of this world, and so he initiates people in the course of this world, Ephesians 2.2. 2. A course or a, a program of instruction to get people away from the truth that God has revealed to them. And so one of the great dangers and why, you, you think, why is evolution so popular? You know, if it's tolerance and I can't judge anybody, uh, why is it that only evolution has been taught in schools for, what, 50 years now? Uh, why is that? If, who are you to judge me? Who are you to say? I mean, evolution isn't a fact. E even the most ardent supporters of it have to admit that it's a theory. Now, they would say it's a real good theory based on evidence, but it's not. Um, but even if it's a theory, then you need to tolerate other theories. And the reason that that is such a big topic or why creation is not allowed to be taught, you're not allowed to read Genesis 1 in a, in a classroom setting, public school, you can't go over creationism is because that's what children know. The invisible things of Him are revealed or seen by those who are made. When you're a child, you may not know theology, um, you know, sound doctrine like that, but you at least know that God created the world, that evolution can't be true. And so what God wants to do is build on that. Well, what Satan wants to do is build on his course of the world and get rid of your knowledge of God. And since the first thing you know is that God created the earth, then what Satan wants to do is come in and destroy that knowledge with evolution. And so if you can start teaching kids evolution in kindergarten, well then you've dumbed them down right away. And you've set them on a lifelong path of denying the evidence and denying the truth, the things that you know to be true. Uh, even a, a, you know, a kid, five, six years old, he doesn't know rocket science, he doesn't know a lot of things, his mind is still developing, but what he does know is he can look around and see that this earth is a whole lot bigger than him, especially when you're a child. I mean, the smaller you are, the bigger everything seems. Uh, so you can look around and see how big this world is, and you can see your parents operating in this world, and you could say, you know, somebody bigger than us created all of this. It's obvious to a child. They know it in, intrinsically. God has revealed it to them. They know there is a creator and that he is worthy of worship. And so Satan wants to come in and just destroy that. So that now we've got evolutionary theory. And once you get them away from creation when they're four or five years old now, now what you've done is you set them on a lifelong path of number one, believing what people tell them, 
without examining the facts. And number two, not thinking rationally. Um, because it's rational to think that God created this earth. But when you're told as a four or five year old that, well, there was a big bang and all these particles came together and, uh, you know, it just happened by chance, and then you believe that, then what you're done is you've been indoctrinated into the religion of evolutionism. And what's dangerous about that, you know, even if you don't, even if you don't recognize God as the creator anymore, you can still be saved because really all you have to do is recognize that you're a sinner and trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins. Um, and then you can learn the truth after that. So it's not a requirement that you believe God created this earth in order to have eternal life. That's not the gospel. But the problem is the teaching of evolution gets gets little kids, little kindergartners and first graders away from believing the truth that God has revealed to them. God has given them a conscience to know right from wrong. God has given them the understanding that there's a creator, that he created this world, that he's worthy of worship. And what you've done to that little child's brain is you said, ignore the evidence, ignore what you know, and just believe whatever we tell you. And so you set them at four or five years old on a lifelong path of not examining the evidence, not believing the truth, so that later on they will never believe the gospel, they will never believe there's a God, because they can't see the truth, because they won't, they don't look at, they don't think of things in those terms, they don't think rationally anymore. They've been dumbed down to just believe whatever they're told. And you can see that that just continues in a lifelong path of idiots. Is that now we just believe whatever the cartoons tell us. After we believe evolution, we believe whatever the cartoons tell us. And they're about equality and tolerance and uh, all this stuff. And then at the same time, they've got all this violence in there. And, and sexual innuendos and things you know kids don't even know but yet to preparing them for a life of sex being their god and uh you know gender equality in terms of transgenderism and homosexuality and all this stuff setting them on a, a path for that and um and so then they just believe whatever they're taught because as a four or five year old when you're taught evolution and it goes against what you taught you think in your mind so then your, your teachers tell you that so then your parents say something you ask your parents and they tell you that they're right and they explain the evolutionary theory well then now all you're going to do is believe a lie the entire your entire life so then you just believe whatever you're taught so then music so cartoons come along and it's a liberal agenda you just believe it you're in that religion of liberalism you hear music the music teaches things ariana grande i think her name is 20, 30 some million hits on her new video within four days on youtube called god is a woman again now 40 million people think god is a woman um, or if they think god i don't know what the who knows what the crazy song is about but um, they're indoctrinated in something that's bad i can tell you that i didn't listen to the song uh, but music t brings them away. Then all the celebrities who, the authorities aren't the pastor or the Bible anymore, are the authorities or the celebrities, the music stars, the movie stars, the, um, you know, the people that they listen to. So now they're talking liberalism, pushing whatever the, gen whatever the agenda is, you know, transgenderism and tolerance and all this stuff and a hatred for God, a hatred for the Bible, a hatred for the truth. Uh, they're just caught up in a web of lies and because they've been indoctrinated in it, that's what they follow. I think it's interesting that Richard Dawkins talks in his book starting in chapter 5 about how you're brainwashed in religion as a child. <coughs> you can look at examples like the church I grew up in. Um, they believe there's a God and taught you to believe the Bible and Jesus died on the cross, but they had a lot of false doctrine that they taught. Well, I believe that as a child because that's what you're taught. Um, you know, Mormonism, a lot of those people, they grow up in that. And, um, 
the only reason they stay in it, the only, there are very few converts, all those Mormons that go to your door, and Jehovah's Witnesses, the same thing, go door to door. There are very few converts in that because uh, really you have to be brainwashed as a child. And so Dawkins talks about that, what religion does, and yet he's not understanding that what he's promoting evolutionism and atheism is exactly that. It's brainwashing. It's to hear you already know for a fact and the evidence shows that there is a God who created everything and you're brainwashed from kindergarten to believe that evolution is true and not to use your rational brain. And so you're just brought up in the course of this world, the religion of of this world that Satan controls and you follow that for the rest of your life and if any truth with anybody out there who has any truth about God and the gospel and what Jesus did for you and you're a sinner you, you completely snuff it out as intolerance and judging me and it can't be the truth because uh, I don't believe the truth anymore I've been indoctrinated in this religion of atheism and evolution so Here's Dawkins complaining about we need to do away with religion because it's brainwashing people, and yet that's exactly what he does with revolution, evolution and atheism, is it just brainwashes people into a lifetime of not thinking for themselves, not believing the truth, but just believing lies. Thanks for watching.